Hello everyone, this is Live Life Well TV host Robert Landau with another episode of Meet Your RCM Executive Staff. And we've got a really special guy for you to meet today. I've known him for many years and it continues to be my pleasure to know him for many years. So now that I've totally embarrassed you, Victor, it is my, <laughs> <laughs> it is my pleasure to introduce Victor Barrios. He is the Vice President of Plant Operations for RCM. Victor, welcome. Thank you. Thank you. Wow, what an introduction. I need to... I, I need you to walk around every day with me. <laughs> yes. your like that. I'll be your publicity. I'll be your publicity. <laughs> my publicity manager, right? <laughs> <laughs> so you have mm -hmm. a very, very interesting life story, a very interesting journey. So let me start out by asking you this. Where did it all begin for you? Where, where did you grow up? Uh, I'm, I grew up in a little island in the Caribbean I called Puerto Rico. <laughs> And um, that's where I was born, you know, I, I, that's where I grew up, right next to the water, right next to the, to the beach, you know, and uh, my family lived there. Um, that, that was my birthplace, you know. I love it. I love Puerto Rico. I, I, I used to visit it with the cruise ships all the time. Were, were you uh, on, on, in the San Juan area or were you on one of them? Um, right next to San Juan, there's, there's an area called uh, Carolina or like Carolina. And I used to, you know, that's where my mom and dad decided to put roots in you know, the area where they decided to put roots in. But my, my mom and dad, they're both from the San Juan area. And they grew up there, went to high school there, and I, they lived all most of their lives there until, until you know, uh, until we moved, <laughs> basically. Do you still have family in San Juan? I still do. I have my mom and my sister. I have two sisters, and I have one brother. Um, I have a, my sis, one of my sisters, my youngest sister. She's with my mom in in san juan my mom didn't like the cold my dad moved us to michigan a long time ago and she just did not like snow and it wasn't in her dna and so she moved back to puerto rico and she goes, no i like the warmth i like you know i like the. i remember one of the things that she used to say is every time we used to go to the lake in in michigan where we moved to she says i can't see the bottom why can't I see the bottom? I said, Mom, <laughs> the water is not the same as the ones in Puerto Rico where you, you can see clear, crystal clear through the bottom. And I'm like, oh, I, so she had a thing about being able to see the see to the bottom of the of, 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 of the water, you know. Yeah, I don't blame at. her. I don't blame her because that's like growing up in Hawaii and all of a sudden moving to Antarctica. I know, I know. So that was a big change. It was a big change for us. You know, back then my dad was um uh, the reason why we moved to uh, to um, to Michigan was due to my dad was looking for brighter frontiers. You know, the, the auto companies were back then they were they were um, you know they were hiring and people were making good money back then. And they, you know, so even in Puerto Rico, you know, the, the word is Detroit was the uh, was the place because that's where all the all the work was at and all the good paying jobs were at and so forth. And that's how we ended up going to, to Michigan and, um, wow. and living in, you know, in, in Michigan. But anyway. Yes. Yes. And, and the cold and the snow. I mean, I, I do a speaking gig uh, uh -huh. every year in Michigan in April. And oh, you do? Yeah. Wow. It's usually mid to late April. It's a long weekend. And I'm uh -huh. telling you, I've been doing it for five years running, except for obvious reasons this year. But every time I go there, this is north of Detroit in a place called Wald Lake that you might have heard of. Yeah, Wald Lake, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. But, I mean, I, I, I get on the plane from Houston with just like a t-shirt or a uh -huh. polo shirt, short sleeve. But when I get off the plane in Detroit, it's snowing in April. I know it's snowing and it's still cold. My dad still lives there. I don't know. He he retired there from the from the um, he went from the auto factories to to working for the local utility company over there. The local utility company is called uh, Detroit Edison. You know, there's New York Edison, there's Detroit Edison. There are many Edisons out there, but they're they're all local utility companies and. Uh, and he retired from there, so he stayed and he lives there in Port Huron. I go and visit him um, 
Port, um, you ever heard of Port Huron, Michigan, right? I, I have heard of it, yeah. Yeah, and then let's say if Michigan is, is you know, where the, the thumb is, it, he lives right here, <laughs> near the thumb area, uh, what have you. But, um, yeah, I go and visit him, you know, and he or he, I bring him over here. I'm trying to, little by little, I'm trying to reel him back from, <laughs> from t to come down to the warmth, you know. And, yes. Yeah. I love the way you navigate. You you use your thumb and your <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You know how Michigan is is basically a thumb a uh, hand. So you just he's, he's in this area. Very. I've never yeah. seen this method before. Very good. <laughs> you're, you're quite incredible. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what was your your very first job? Oh my God! My very first job was actually it was two jobs. I, my. I was doing two things at the same time. My very first job, I was working at Little Caesars Pizza. Little Caesars, remember, remember <laughs> Little Caesars? Oh, sure. Uh-huh, I was working at Little Caesars and I was also working at night for UPS. Uh, working, loading up, this is, I'm going back almost 25, 30 years. Um, no, more than that. Yeah, and, and anyways, it was United, uh, United uh, Parcel Services. I was loading up those, uh, those, um, you know, the, uh, I was loading up boxes, you know, in those long trailers, those forty-foot trailers, and and it was they were paying very well back then. And wow, I was I thought I was making a lot of money. There can only you can only work four hours a day, and I was, but it, they were paying twenty bucks an hour, and I thought I was a lot. Yeah, that's that's not bad at all. <laughs> you know, even nowadays. Yeah, I know. <laughs> so what did you learn from those doing those two jobs? I mean, that's a lot of hours. Yeah, yeah. I was I've I've learned to um actually I, I've uh, at Little Caesars I started off as a uh, you know, just regular making the pizzas and so forth, but but that's where you get you get the first glimpses of your of your of leadership and managerial experience and so forth. And little by little, I kind of climbed the ladder of, of the store ladder to, to, I made it to a shift leader and then I made it to assistant manager and little things like that. But then that was all within the span of about a year, a year and a half or so. That's great. Lots of, lots of important business and yeah, research yeah. some leadership lessons. Exactly. Because you you know you learn a little bit about accounting, you learn how to close the books at night, you learn how to how to you know how business is run and, and profit margins and that was kind of like my first introduction into into that world. You know so you 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 got some good experience that way. Great experience some life lessons that way. But I also wanted to ask you growing up where you did there's such an emphasis on family, the joy of family, the celebration of being with family. Were there any, was there something or, or some things that were instilled in you growing up in this wonderful family unit that you use as a foundation uh, to move forward with your life today? You, you shared with us uh, what you learned on your very first jobs. How about uh, on the other side of things, which is family? Yeah, um, my mom, my mom taught me, the, the, the biggest lesson my mom taught me was having a sense of um, fairness, a, a sense of morality, a sense of, you know, this is right, this is wrong, you know. Um, my mom has, my mother has this, calmness about her this sense of 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 fairness about her and she she always told me victor you you, you were born a libra that's why you're so balanced and i was like really mom i say yeah but but she she instilled that in me you know a, a sense to to lead from the heart you know i i i, I don't know how to explain it but it's it's a way i don't know you you can you can lead from the heart as opposed to leading, you know, from, from somewhere else. And, and that, that's something that she instilled in me. My dad, absolutely. It was worth work ethic. I used to see my dad toil every day. You know, he was, he used to work um, as an electrician for 
uh, a few companies. Then he, he worked as an elevator repairman as well um, for Otis Elevator. He used to take me on the jobs with him and so forth. And, and that's kind of where I learned, okay, you know, the work ethic, you know, he, was, he used to teach me little things about the work, about how elevators and electricity and this, that, and the other. And, and he absolutely positively taught me, you know, to have a great work ethic, to which, you know, knock on wood, I, um, I, I hopefully I'll continue to have here. Oh yeah. Well, there <laughs> I'll you always go. follow it. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but it's, it's interesting because at an early age, through like the first two jobs you had and what your mom instilled in you and the fact that your dad took you on the job with him, I can see how you, it, it led you to do what you're doing now. So yeah, tell me absolutely. a little bit about that journey. So you, you, you mentioned about your first two jobs. Any other jobs along the way before you got to RCM that might be worth mentioning for any reason? Um, I was always mechanically inclined. You know, I was, all, I, I, I was pretty, I was very good at those tests that are spatial tests where you have to, anyways, I was mechanically inclined and I had an aptitude for that and I had an aptitude for math as well, you know, um, and everything, everything was steering me. It, it, it's weird. It's as if life somehow steers you in, in towards, towards your gifts and towards, your, you know, things that you're good at. And I noticed that I was really good at, at um, either building things, taking them apart, putting them together, the engineering side of things. And that's what that's where I uh, I worked a lot. I, I um, let me see one of the one of the jobs that I had um, was a small construction company. I had that for for about five years while I was in Michigan, and uh, I did very well with that. I actually sold that company, and I um, the, the the monies from that company I took. I uh, I moved to Florida. I moved the family out of Florida because I don't know at that particular point. You know, I just wanted to get out from the cold, and I was married by then, and and I moved to um, um, Claremont, Florida, which was which is a suburb of Orlando, Florida. You know, and and there I uh, got involved in in they had a lot of timeshare resorts there, and I got involved in one of the timeshare resorts. Um, the name of it had this funny, the funniest name. It, it was called the Leaky Tiki Village. The what? Say the it Leaky, again. the Leaky Tiki Village. Oh. Um, <laughs> it was. It had one of the funniest names. But um, I got involved there. I was hired there as what's called the chief engineer, and I was in charge of about forty, uh, a staff of about forty people there. And um, I did very well. You know, it, it was a big complex. You know, it was it was a twenty acre complex with with about seventeen huge buildings and water parks and and this that and the other and I I did very well there um, managing the maintenance department and you know I I kept going back to the same thing you know I, I like the engineering side of things and the building engineering as, aspect but I always ended up managing. I always ended up managing a group. I always enjoyed managing. And, and why I enjoyed managing so much is because I, I always enjoyed teaching. And, and I love that. I love, I don't know what, it, when I teach something, it just lights, I light up. You know, especially when I'm teaching something regarding, um, you know, the engineering side of building maintenance and building engineering. And so I just light up. So um, I did very well there. And then you're not gonna believe what they offered me. They, they, uh, the owners of of the um, of that particular resort, they owned about quite a few resorts. Um, um, they were called back then Island One Resorts. But anyways, they um, they offered me. They they purchased a small little boutique resort out in the U.S. Virgin Islands, and they offered me to go out there, build some units for them over there and run that particular resort for a while. So I was the, um, I said, okay, fine. I talked it over with the, well, I talked it over with, with my wife. And finally, you know, we said, okay, let's go. So I took the family and we went out there 
to to um, to the islands again to to uh, the island of um, Saint Croix. I don't know if oh. you've ever been there. Oh yes, it's it's incredible. Incredible. Yeah. You know, there's Saint Thomas, Saint Croix, yes. the U.S. Virgin Islands. You exactly. Know, Saint John. You know, so the resort is in the island of Saint Croix, and I ran that resort for about four and a half years. I was the general manager for that resort. Um, and then, you know, the economy changed. Uh, this was back in 2009, 10, something to that extent. And they sold the resort and I decided I had some friends here in Houston and I moved to Houston. Just, just out of, out of, uh, out of just what some friends were telling me. Some friends, oh, Victor, you, you'll find some work in Houston. You need to come to Houston. And so, so I, I, I moved, you know. So how did you, how did you find RCM? How did RCM find you? Well, first of all, I was, once I, I was working in, in hotels a lot. So once I came to Houston, I was working for Marriott, Hilton, Crown Plaza. So uh, uh, um, I was working for the big, what we call big box hotels. And I was working as, um, as a chief engineer. It was what I liked to do, you know. Uh, um, and I worked for, for the big companies for a while. And um, one day, I was noticing that my, my ex-wife was coming to me, and, and she was a nurse. She is a nurse. And she was coming to me telling me, Victor, um, Guess what happened today? Guess what I this I, I had this patient and she was so lovely and she was just this and that and the other and she used to always come home and talk about the patients that she had at you know at the end of the day and and I was noticing how close she was to her patients and how 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 there was that interaction you know that human to human interaction that in the hotel business you know it's very transactional you know it's in and out. People are in and out all, all the time. It's not, it's not like um, in the healthcare business. And I, I really, I wanted that. I, I kind of wanted that interaction, that closeness, that heart to heart interaction. And so one day um, there was uh, the village of Milan. Jim was building the, uh, the village of Milan. And back then there was uh, the general manager was Oscar Luna. I don't know if you remember Oscar Luna. I do. I yeah. do. That's when I started speaking there. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That's when you started, yeah, with Oscar Luna. And, and I didn't know anything. I just said, maybe, in, maybe if I switch from hotels to, to assisted living, and it, it'll be, you know, I can probably get. So I, I, I put a letter together, and I send a letter to Oscar Luna saying, you know, exactly what I'm telling you. And I said, uh, look, my name is Victor Barrios. I know you don't know me, but I've been working in, the, in engineering all for so many, so many years and building engineer. I would love to be, you know, I didn't even apply then. I just send him a letter, a handwritten letter, you know, telling him exactly what I, what I wanted. You know, it's as if you're telling the universe, hey, here, this is what I want, you know, can, am I gonna get it? And true enough, Oscar Luna called me back and he said, um, he says, sure, come on, uh, let me interview you, fill out an application, and wow, I got, I got the job. I, I, I had a lot of experience, you know, um, but I got the job, and I was so happy about that. Back then, um, the Village of Milan was, was um, under the management of Brookdale. Remember that? When it was under I, I do remember that. Yeah, yeah. and so and Jim had Brookdale under management there, and I was working for Brookdale. So... Um, um, Lynn Wallace and I, you know, we were both, we both came on at the same time, we came on on board, you know, at the same time. And, and we, we literally were opening up that community and setting meetings and making sure that that community opened well. And that was my introduction basically into assisted living and memory care and the healthcare side of, of um, you know, such so as assisted living and memory care. Lynn yes. and I had great times. <laughs> oh, and that's when I first met you. And yeah. Victor, I will never forget because residents know that when I do my monthly lectures at RCM Communities, uh -huh. it's not only a lecture. I will show clips off of DVDs having to do with a topic that I'm speaking on. And what people don't understand is 
somebody who is not, you know, an audio tech guy, the, the, the setup, the, the television, the DVD, the audio setup, the audio visual setup is different at every community. So when I come in and I want to get started, I don't know what to connect, what to turn on, how to make this work. And for some reason at the village of Ireland, I could never, ever figure it out. And you <laughs> I remember. were amazing because it was like you would just show up when I was about to cry, you know, <laughs> and all you just sort of appeared. I didn't even have to, to, to ask the activity director or anybody else to find you. You just happened to walk by. And uh, I, I'm sure everybody who's watching this has realized a, a number of things about you. But one is you have a permanent smile on you. Things, which you know is just wonderful it's it's connected like you said to your uh -huh. heart right yeah and so i felt just the moment i would see you every month <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because i, I couldn't figure the damn thing out every month you would just very calmly you know smile and say hey how you doing and, and you knew that i was not doing well <laughs> you know, so yes, you, I remember many a days. <laughs> oh my God, you fixed the whole thing up, and, and you know, until you appeared next month, you know, and it, yeah. you, you have this wonderful energy about you, Victor, and I can see now where it comes from. Uh, you know how you grew up, where you grew up, your mindset, your attitude, uh, living life from the heart instead of always from the head makes a huge difference you know the the the, the um the mindset that that um choice comes from within and then you will start to see it uh without on the outside of you and you, and exactly. you are a perfect example of that so tell me vice president of plant operations i guess you would have to know when to water plants when to trim them uh, what plants? No, I'm just joking. I'm just joking. <laughs> <laughs> now that's funny. <laughs> if you're sitting there going, oh my God, it's just so serious. <laughs> but uh, give, uh, that is funny. <laughs> give us a very brief job description of what a vice president of plant operations really does for RCM. Um, well, we, we wear, we wear a lot of hats, you know, I wear a lot of hats, you know, I help out in a lot of, in a lot of sections, but, um, as a vice president of plant operations, I make sure that, um, safety is one of the biggest things that I have to handle. I handle, um, uh, any issues relate, related to safety within the communities. You know, I do the OSHA training classes, um, uh, for them um any safety uh, recommendations and so forth and not just safety on the sense of of all uh, of the um of general safety guidelines but safety on the sense that you know we get inspected by the state you know and the states have regulations and so forth and make sure that the communities are safe at all times and and i'm i'm very involved in that making sure you know that all the state guidelines and state regulations and any any violations are taken care of and met and 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 everything it's running uh that the buildings are running smoothly i take care of a lot of contracts you know contracts for a lot of uh, uh issue for a lot of contractors that do work within the building you know and i i put those contracts together with with my colleagues over at our at rcm and um a lot of training i love teaching you know teaching and training that's that's uh that's a big thing for me you know um as a vice president of plant operations you know you're always in constant you're always a problem solver you're always trying to solve a problem or mitigate how do you mitigate this problem or how do you solve this problem or how do you it, so you're getting a lot of phone calls from a lot of from a lot of people throughout the throughout the corporation you know victor what, how, what do what do we do about this or what do we do about that or or this particular piece of equipment went down. So you're always counseling and giving your best advice and, and making sure that, you know, that, um, that, that, you know, we have a fiduciary responsibility with the company, you know, so I'm, a lot of times I'm making sure that, that we adhere to that and make sure that we, we get the best contracts and the best possible pricing and the best, you know, they call me the, the negotiator because I negotiate almost everything. 
you know, I, I, I was telling my mom, you know, one day, I said, Mom, the day that I pass, I think I'm going to negotiate with God. We're, we're, we're. <laughs> <laughs> and you know what? You'll do it with a smile on your face. Too. But that's yeah, a big response. Started laughing. You, you, you'll negotiate because he, he, you know, but that's what they call me, the negotiator. Yes. I negotiate a lot. A big of responsibility. The, the things yes. that you mentioned. And I have to tell you, I have a lot of admiration for you because I'm a typical New York City boy. I mean, I'm really good at hammering the nail in a wall and putting a picture up, but anything else, forget it. So it, it, it really, it, it takes, it, it, it's quite something to me to, to, be well versed in how things work and troubleshooting an air conditioning system that keeps a building cool or mm -hmm. you know negotiating with these these contractors i mean that i think many residents who are watching this recognize you because you're very visible at rcm communities but yeah. i'm not sure how many know what you do and hearing what you just shared how important what you do is. I mean, really, we're talking about resident life, resident comfort, mm -hmm. you know, water systems, electricity, air conditioning. I mean, I'm sure there are a million other sprinkler systems. Sprinkler you know. system, fire systems, uh, safety systems, kitchen systems, kitchen safety systems. I mean, I can go on and on and on telling you all the things that we have in our communities that, that keep our residents safe, and we do. We, we have some of the safest buildings in the, in the Houston metro area. And, and our buildings are very well kept, very well, uh, um, the maintenance department does a great job in making sure, you know, that our residents are safe at all times and that any, if anything happens, you know, uh, that breaks down, we're, we're right there to fix it. You know, we're right there to keep it up and maintain it and make sure that we're, we're within the, um, you know, the government guidelines. And that's that's very interesting because I have to tell you because I walk into a lot of RCM communities all the time, mm -hmm. and 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 looking forward to continuing to do so. And, and there's a very secure feeling that I get when I walk into an RCM community, and I can never put my finger on it, but you just did. It it it, it, it because it's safe because it's kept up so well, yes. each and every community. I mean, I've never seen anything on the floor anywhere. Yeah. You know, it, and, and the, you are the glue that, that <laughs> keeps all of that together. So really, Victor, kudos to you. Um, well, there's a big team behind me that, you yes. know, but I, but I train that team and I train the housekeeping and maintenance team and, and they do an amazing job. Like you said, I'm, we're, we're, I'm, I'm, I'm so proud and, and our entire executive team is so proud of, of the people that we have on our buildings, taking care of our seniors and taking care of our, of our, of our um, you know, the staff that we have and so forth. Yes, and, really and awesome. I can see why. I can see why. It's, it's a really good team effort, mm -hmm. you know, and, and the team isn't only the corporate executives. It extends to each and every community and, and everything as a whole. It's about teamwork, it's about family, it's about uh, approaching things from the heart. And that, yes. I think, is one of the many things that uh, separates RCM uh, Absolutely. From, from others like it. So in closing, mm -hmm. uh, I'll, I'll ask you to consider this. Uh, because so many residents see you, and probably they notice the smile on your face in person when they see you. <laughs> uh, if I were to ask you, uh, from your heart, to give a message to all of the residents who are watching this episode, what would you say to them if you could address them right now? And I'd like to ask you to do so. Um, a message that I would tell them, it's... To be honest with you, the residents changed my life, you know, because I'm, I'm one of those, I, I'm a heart centered person. I'm one of those people that leads, likes to lead with the heart. And when you come across, the, you know, a resident and you're able to meet their needs and they smile, just like the smile that I have right now, and they say thank you and they appreciate the fact that you know, you, you took the time to take care of them, 
you know, that to me, it's, 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 that's the goal that, that shines, you know, in my heart. That's, that's, that's my, that's my light right there, you know, and believe it or not, you know, I'm, I'm predisposed to serve. And I, I, and I don't know how to say it, but I love to serve our residents. And I know that we're trying to, we, we make sure that we get staff that serves. And, and just, just for me alone, you know, from my own experience, I just enjoy it. I enjoy serving our seniors. And, I, and I'm going to continue to enjoy serving our seniors. And if you see me out there in one of the communities and you see me smiling and you see me, it's because our seniors, those are, they bring me joy personally in my heart. You know, it's, it's as if I have this compass that, that tells me you have to serve, you know, and, it, and, it, and it's, I don't know where it's coming from, but I'm, I'm there to serve them. And we're there, and every, and so is RCM. We're there to serve them in every with everything that that they need, and and to make sure that they live that they live life well. I love it. I love it. So residents, you heard it. That's a big thank you from Victor from his heart to all of you for for making his job and his service to you uh, so worthwhile. So, with that said, from my heart to yours, Victor, thank you so much for sharing wonderful, amazing you. Keep up the incredible work and don't ever stop smiling, okay? <laughs> thank you so much, Robert. It's, Take care. it's been my pleasure. And with that, everybody, big thanks to Victor. Big thanks to you for watching. This has been Robert Landau, Live Life Well TV host. We look forward to seeing you on our next episode. Until then, keep Thanks. smiling. If Victor does it, <laughs> so can you. Thank you. <laughs> Take care, Victor. Take care.